We got ourselves another Mr. A.H. Branding class from the Elite Season 3 Episode 9 review. Let's see what he has to say. So this week's uh, episode of Classroom of the Elite was sick. It's spicy. You think just because Yamauchi's gone, it's going to chill everything out? In nope. fact, the class tensions are as high as ever, and the chairman is not too pleased by the outcome. Because very clearly, this whole situation was designed to target our boy. Technically, not the chairman just yet, right? I believe he starts in April, and as soon as this season is done, I believe we get into April, right? So we're going to second year, and because the chairman is not officially chairman yet, he can assault his students, because they're not his students just yet, right? And the idea that, to no one's surprise, the chairman's pretty much under orders from... White Room. ...our boy's father. Mm -hmm. But I have to... Well, we don't know, right? Nothing has been confirmed. Sure, we have our suspicions. And again, don't spoil me. We're talking from the context of anime only. Nothing has been stated that he is from the White Room. However, it's extremely likely that there's White Room affiliations. It's most likely that Aonokoji's papa wants Aonokoji back, and Skishiro is an agent from the White Room sent to do such a thing. Now, that is like the most level one thinking, right? That's the most obvious. But this show, you don't... You can't just do level one thinking. You got to think beyond that. What is this guy all about? Could he actually be on Anakoji's side? I don't know. Probably not. To admit, the coldness of his demeanor did catch me by surprise. Mm. Because I thought it would be funny. You know, I'm just cracking some jokes. Because we literally confirm, I think, what most of us were thinking. I mean, I pointed it out. The theory was that the whole reason Yamauchi was, like, targeted was because he tripped her at the start of the season. I, I honestly didn't think Arisu was that petty, but she was. That was like a surprising quirk, and honestly, kind of hilarious. Arisu was like, yeah, fuck Yamauchi. I remember that shit. I held my grudges. I'm like, all right, that's kind of funny. Turns out, that's literally her entire yeah, purpose. That was and it. Of course, she was... Well, not entirely. Yamauchi happened to be there, and he just kind of was a useful pet for her, for her project. But to get Aonokoji to get the class of suspicion onto him because it's like why would class a all cast their positive votes on this npc from the perspective of our class right so susan had to actually do defense which she actually doesn't get enough credit i think susan like clutched the last episode and kind of cleared the suspicion onto anakoji right so i think that arisa obviously was petty wanted yamachi gone but on top of that was trying to get like anakoji's um sus level the radar to be going higher for his classmates. She's gonna use all of the, her class's positive points to protect Aino Koji because why would she want to eliminate Aino Koji in a completely boring and dull way? So everything gets confirmed in a way that a lot of people were expecting because the arc was very clearly progressing to a certain point. But I have to admit, the way that it gets confirmed so casually that yeah, that mm -hmm. little scumbag who tripped me, I don't like his attitude so he- that shit was funny. It just came out of nowhere. I, I thought she was beyond that, right? I think everybody could should have assumed that Adisu is beyond that. She doesn't really give a fuck about Yamauchi, but she's like, no, she's a little petty. So it's like, it it, it humanizes Adisu more. I'm like, okay, that's pretty funny. That's, a, that's like a pr pretty normal quirk for her to have. He had to go. And the idea that the chairman walks down, and I'm thinking, oh, mm. it'd be kind of funny if like this, this man like pushed her out of the way. Oh, he doesn't. Kick the fucking cane. I swear to God, whenever there's a scene in Classroom of the Elite and you're by a stairway and someone is at the top of the stair and there's sunset lighting, something epic always fucking happens. That's worse. He, f <laughs> he drop kicks that goddamn cane. And our boy recognizing like, okay, if I catch her, maybe it will like get me a bit more on her good side because if he mm. can avoid drama, he's going to. And this man grabs him, chokes him up against- Now, him. is it true that in the light novel, Aonokoji actually defended Arisu against Kishiro? I saw some pictures, light novel illustrations. Apparently, Aonokoji did not just get just like that. Aonokoji like was able to do piano and calligraphy and defended Arisu from Skishiro. But in the anime, they intentionally made this guy even more menacing, huh? That's hilarious. The, the anime was like, no, no, we know Aonokoji, you know, saves Arisu. But we want to really emphasize that Skishiro does not fuck around. So the anime is going pretty hard, huh? It's the wall and I'm like, damn. Maybe Yamauchi was actually the winner all along because he gets to avoid the assault that is the school faculty, but who the hell knows at this point. I have a full live reaction over on my Check his Patreon, account. guys. Full link of thoughts to today's episode. It's over there if you're interested. So honestly, quite a lot happened. There's like a little bit of lightheartedness in this episode, but a lot of it just sets the stage for... Even in Mr. Brandon's video, Sakura managed to sneak in and waste our fucking time. One final hurrah. 
And it's interesting because basically, once again, someone's designed to get eliminated. So we have these kind of like captains per class. And to no one's real surprise, each of the captains that were selected mm -hmm. have the kind of the protection point that will. Right. They, I, if I forgot about this, right? I think during the episode, I got a little bit too caught up, but none of the captains can get expelled, right? None of them because they got the protection points, right? Or at least Anakoji Narisu can't, right? This is confirmed. But it's like the captains cannot participate in the games per se, but they can be involved. So in the chess game, it's pretty obvious that, you know, it wouldn't be hilarious if Sudo is the one playing for our class. And I don't know, have some idiot from A class play. But it's like, you know, Anakoji telling Sudo to like, you know, move these positions. It would be hilarious if someone stupid like Sudo did it. And Anakoji made Sudo look like a fucking genius, dude will prevent them from being expelled push comes to shove because if memory serves each of the person for each class that had the most positive points got one of those protection points yeah. so i'm interested to see because it's very much designed that they want to start cutting the fat they want to start trimming that fat and most importantly i koji's father wants him back home he wants mm. him to stop messing around and trying to find out right like that is his whole purpose is he messing around I guess messing around according to Anakoji's papa's plan, because what's Anakoji doing here? He just wants to experience a normal high school life away from his parent or parent, which is kind of funny because maybe I stated that wrong. The school is the furthest thing from a normal high school experience. But you know what I'm saying? This happens to be the only place where Anakoji can get isolated from his dad's connections. Turns out the white room can just say, nah, we can just put spy cameras there. Papa actually did show up, right? Even like Chabashir was talking about, you know, Papa in like season one. And now Skishiro is here on behalf of Papa, probably. Again, nothing confirmed, but I think it's the most likely assumption, right? So I don't know. Where are we going to go on from here? Skishiro versus Anakoji? The principal versus us? So I'm interested to see how much BS is going to be thrown his way because the kind of short end of the test is pretty much that each class makes up 10 subjects to do. It could be something like rock, paper, scissors, but you know, there's different rules of what can and can't be done. I like dodgeball. One of the which that is uh, being written down was chess, and there's a whole list of rules, and it'd take me 30 minutes to go through each and every little thing, but... I ain't gonna lie. I do not remember the rules. All I know is there's games. Some of them are real games. Some of them are fake games. That's about it. The idea that pretty much seven are going to be selected out of that pile of 20. And it's going to be interesting because we pretty much get the matchup that you expect, which is Saki Yanagi versus Aino Koji, because we have four captains, obviously. And the way it was picked, predetermined by our boy, mind you. But yes. at the end of the day, it was all planned. it's going to be very interesting because class tensions are at an all time high. So what are they going to do during the chess game? Like, you can't have like an earpiece, right? Like, we need some kind of earpiece, some way to communicate. Like, what, is, is Sudo, if, if Sudo's playing chess, is he gonna be on the fucking phone like this? A cell phone without a coach telling him the fucking details? Isn't that a little bit too obvious? I don't fucking really know. Oh, thank you, Shiroi, for the three months in a row tier one sub. I appreciate it, man. But, like, how is it gonna work, huh? How the fuck is Anakoji and Sakayagi going to be able to, like, communicate to their players? Huh? We need to figure that out. Like, there is no more happy-go-lucky work class unity like they were trying to build up near the start of everything no it's pretty much like why there's there's our chess player right here the grand master pseudo dude the hell would this boring nobody i know koji have the most protection points like the most positive points mm. makes no sense the and suspicion you yourself in their shoes this is a guy who for most of the anime and their class years has been nobody and mm -hmm. then around the track and field day one time is when things started to kind of be like well maybe he's a little more talented than we gave credit to that was intentional too it wasn't even a mistake right we're trying to throw ryu in off but aside from that we're just like a real nobody and then in comes him with mr popular like like what type of bullshit did he do but that's the beauty of it right because i believe susan's argument was anakoji is trivial it's I, Sakayanagi arbitrarily picked him. It could have been EK. It could have been fucking Sakura for all that matters, right? The positive points casted onto Anakoji, the excuse anyways, was like, it could have been anybody. He's a fucking NPC. Don't worry about it, right? So honestly, pretty, it's a very feasible line of thinking. It, it makes a lot of sense. Especially because, as much as I hated the guy, he the guy did have friends and now he's eliminated. And the way they kind of deflected being like, you know, listen, 
it's very clear she had her own ambition, she had her own ulterior motive, she admitted to it out loud, and our boy rises to the occasion like, listen, this doesn't look good, but I'll be captain so no one has to worry about being expelled sort mm. of a thing. And, it and then everyone was like, why the fuck would we let you be captain, Adam Koji? You suck at everything. You got 50 on everything, right? It just kind of diffuses it, but it reminds... Wait, what, what was the excuse again after that? What, what was the excuse? Everyone was like, what the fuck? Why would we want Ayana Koji to be captain? Because Ayana Koji was like, all right, I'll be captain to, like, atone for, and to clear the suspicion. But everyone was like, the fuck? Are, if we're supposed to assume that you're, you know, average, why the fuck would we... All right, the protection points, because, like, he's safe. So it's, like, a very safe way to kind of, like, nobody kind of loses, right? Nobody kind of loses. Reminds you that anything that kind of felt like it was uh, too good to be true with class harmony is, without a doubt, too good to be true and the drama and the characterization of all these little plot points has always been very interesting because i know koji's a very hard character to read even if you know he's probably the master manipulator or he's scheming in the background you never quite know his exact intentions what if skishiro is part of anakoji's plan what if anakoji summons skishiro here i'm just saying probably not again there's i i, I will always throw 0.01% theory is out in the blind, it, just in case one of them will stick. But, like, with this show, you re we really never know what Ayana Koji, dude. You can assume when he gives this girl a heart-shaped necklace oh, that it's that mostly one. to keep her on his good side. And I would argue with no light novel knowledge, again, because anime only, is, I would assume this too. If I didn't know a light novel knowledge, right, I would be like, yeah, you're right. I think this necklace is just to make this tool uh, stay in line. But the light novel has confirmed that Ayana Koji, up to this point in the anime, one for one, you know, translation, light novel confirms he does care about Kay. He thinks that there actually might be some romance. So like this necklace, yes, I'm sure he did like under he did probably like think like, oh, this will probably help me get even more closer to her and she's gonna stay more loyal. But it's not just that, right? At least I hope. And to make sure that he has a valuable ally, if not pawn. But a part of you is like, well, what if there is some genuine feelings there? Like, it's True. hard to tell for yeah. sure, because the longer someone spends with someone, even if they started out with, I'm using her for my end objective, you never know what type of stuff could occur. I bet K is the perfect character that Ayana Koji's dad doesn't want Ayana Koji to be exposed to. Because, like, more of this human side is coming out, right? The more you associate yourself with these normies, the more of the human side comes out of the Ayana Koji. Because the whole point of the White Room is, I'm sure, to strip you of everything and create this artificial genius, this sociopath that's been, that only sees, like, a human as a tool. Everyone else is a tool to you, and you're supposed to use them to get ahead in life. Because at the end of the day, the White Room is trying to procure, like, ultimate weapons to, like... I don't know, send them out to politics and become world leaders, right? That's the entire ideology of the White Room, right? So I'm sure if, like, Ayana Koji's dad was here, like, K, she's probably, like, number one, like, first out. He would fucking waterboard her herself, maybe? But most of us assume that every piece of the puzzle that Ayana Koji interacts with is because of a plan. And everyone's pretty oblivious to it. And when it feels like people are starting to recognize and start to piece together that maybe this guy's a little more out of place than they realize... He always finds a way to snake his way back into the shadows. And it's very interesting because by the end of this season, it feels like we're going to reach the most explosive point. Because hmm. on one hand, having such an exp explosive... Are, are we... Well, we do have 10, 11, 12... We have four episodes left. This could be one final... I hope it's one final big arc. Four episodes, right? Can you guys confirm that this coming like arc with the chest thing is the last um, arc? Or do you think there's going to be a little bit more? Are we... Do we have, like, a huge scene coming? I This is kind of spoilers, but not really. I'm not asking for the details. I'm just saying, like, is there, like, a huge moment coming? Like, an Ayana Koji versus Ryu in fight? There's still two volumes of content left, right? Because the GOAT has shown up, but is there, like, a huge moment that's showing up? Mr. Brandon is kind of assuming that maybe we're going to, like, a tipping point and And with, the, like, the finale of, like, first year, there has to be some huge moment, right? Four episodes. Season... Three finale. I wonder if they're going to give us something fucking insane. Close of expel, plus, you know, the idea of his father now openly assaulting him. Now, obviously, <laughs> the chairman's not his father, but, I mean, the chairman's pretty much acting on his... Pretty much. I mean, we can assume that, right? It's not confirmed, but it's pretty much like that, right? Yeah, so, you know, even if he's not necessarily pointing the gun, the father still is responsible. I'm interested to see, because we could have... So, I guess Skishido is Papa Koji's tool, huh? We could see it like that. And again, nothing's confirmed yet, but it's 
I think it's very safe to us. Nah, nah, you can't say safe to assume. You can never be gonna be okay. But I think the um the level one line of thinking, the most intuitive one, is that Skushiro is Anakoji's dad's tool. Something as either one of the biggest characters we don't see coming getting expelled. I know Koji being exposed because I mean if. What if he gets expelled? Does that mean that the White Room failed? Now you bring up a very good point, and I was kind of thinking about this too. What if like Anakoji's dad realizes, you know what? If he's not gonna come back to the White Room, why don't I just make the school the White Room? You understand? If Koji's dad is able to get his people in the school faculty and rule over the school and operate the school as if it was the White Room, Anakoji now has to graduate. I don't know. I feel like this whole thing from Koji's dad and this whole way of trying to get Koji expelled don't you isn't it like a test you know what I mean again don't spoil me but I feel like Koji's dad should be smart enough to realize that shit maybe it's impossible to bring him back and if that's the case how can we problem solve if you're gonna stay there fuck it let's send our people over there and make that the fucking white school you know what I mean like instead of the white room we got the white school huh if he continues to screw over this faculty and not, you know, do what his father wants, I mean, at the end of the day, who's to say that it's he not the boy. Feel that I know Koji's more than meets the eye and he can no longer hide in the shadows. You never know, right? Or maybe he has another school year in him before shit like that would even be a possibility. But either way, the aftermath of Yamauchi leaving is lingering as it should because of how much there was that harmony. Class presidents no longer being able to- Harmony. With Yamauchi? Who was really sad about it? EK and Sudo kind of were because, you know, they're like the idiot trio, right? And then it was Hirata. But everyone else, I don't think really gave a fuck, right? I think it's just like the bitter feeling that's left over because of how united we were up, to, up until this point, right? Well, to be positive, just done with the- She know how to like, doesn't give a fuck! <laughs> it's not a pleasant place to be, and it's very much being reminded in moments yeah. like these. I think Michan. It's just taking L after L after L, dude. When is Michan gonna get a dub? This sucks. It's also interesting how Michan was introduced in this season, if and since the mountain arc, but she has yet to do anything significant yet. The author intentionally introduced, well, the anime studio at least. And maybe, hey, in the next four episodes, Michan's gonna clutch up. Who the fuck knows, right? But it's like, shit, Michan still hasn't done anything except get, get told shut up by Yamauchi and pretty much just shut up by Hirata, right? Bro, Michan is too good for them. Now, what's another character? Sakura. You guys have said that Sakura is supposed to pop off in season 3. I am unreasonably cruel to this character. For the memes, but if you've seen my content, you know why I'm mad at her. I'm not going to repeat it, but like, she has yet to do something yet. We have four episodes left. If she doesn't do anything, she's going to be actually solidified as the worst character in this fucking school, dude. Now, I think in the source material... Sakura season 5? Fuck me. You guys said it's going to be season 3, man. I got baited. The uh, assault scene was actually a hand around the neck, not the, like the elbow. At least I saw a couple of people mention that before I got up here to make this video. I don't know if that... Okay, okay. Sakura is year 2 content, not season 3. Maybe I misassumed it. Alright, so Sakura wastes 3 fucking seasons. 3 seasons of setup for what? She better do fucking something in year two, man. That's true. If it is, it is. To me, it still came across as assault, but, you know, the adaptation of Classroom of the Elite, as we've talked about multiple times. Is and I'm being very mean right now. I, I'm not even listening to what Mr. Brandon's saying right now. I'm too caught up in my own fucking head. But, okay, listen to me, okay? Sakura, I'm mad at her because we wasted an entire fucking arc in season one and nothing has been paid off ever since then, right? I don't give a fuck about her SIM card, the camera proof, that shit didn't fucking matter, Anna Koji clutched up at the end. Now, I'm not mad at other characters like Shinohara, or like, what, what's some other NPC girls in her class? There's a lot of NPCs that yet, that's yet to kind of like step up, right? I believe there's like Shinohara, there's like another, um, Akats not Akatsuki, Ayatsu, I, I, there's other girls, right? There's other girls in this school that I'm sure will have their moments in year two. Matsushita, right? But the reason I don't shit on Onodera, Matsushita, Shinohara, all these characters is because they didn't waste my goddamn time in season one. They didn't. They're still lying dormant. And when the time comes, they'll awaken and they'll pop off when the time is right. Sakura fucking wasted like three episodes or some shit in season one and then she's just a simp she does nothing but simp and i'm like this feels so fucking wasted so why'd you even Ugh, whatever whatever it's just early game pains you know it's 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 it's, it's like early game pains in class union league season one i'm sure the author didn't completely understand what he wanted to do with this character sakura somehow got chosen to be part of that thing but i'm sure he didn't understand how to exactly you know i don't know place her in, in year one maybe her 
it's just the timing's not right, right? So it's like an unfortunate situation of released her too soon and the timing's not right, but goddamn. God damn, every time I see her, I'm just reminded that she fucking wasted my time in season one. It still came across as assault, but, you know, the adaptation of Classroom of the Elite, as we've talked about multiple times, especially with season three, this is a universally criticized adaptation that continues to get more popular with each season. It so what does that mean? If a vocal minority of light novel elitists are shitting on the anime, saying the anime fucking sucks, but the anime just keeps on getting popular by every metric there is, what does that really mean? Numbers don't lie. Normies are perfectly fine with the anime. Now, do I want the anime to be better? Of course. I would love the anime to slow down and just like cover even more content. I don't care about rushing to season to year two. I'd honestly be fine, dude. As long as you give me fleshed out Classroom the Elite from the light novel with all the incredible scenes and like, uh, you know, animated into the anime. I'm perfectly down with that, bro. If in season three right now, we're still about to fight Iona Koji versus Riwin. I'd be fucking down because that just means all the content that led up to it was even more fleshed out and even better, right? We're not missing anything. In fact, there's even more for us to enjoy in the future, right? So again, the anime obviously has its problems. The vocal criticisms of the anime, I, I've seen it. And I'm just saying like, yes, it sucks that the anime is not as fleshed out as we want, but all the fucking normies love it. So the anime producers are probably going to continue with it. Isn't Studio Lurch the one responsible for it? Or at least the production of it. I'm not really sure. But I hear that the contract ends with this season. And in season 4 and beyond. Who knows what studio is going to pick it up. I feel like if they've done this good of a job so far. Good as in the numbers are doing well. Not your opinion of you know the anime. Then I feel like they're going to pick it back up. Or we're, gonna, we're just going to continue with this shit man. It's an anomaly in the anime world. Because usually when it's a quote unquote poor adaptation. You know it doesn't get more and more popular. But as also many star shooters has pointed out. You know if we you know adapted page for page we would still be at like season one. Honestly, I don't give a fuck. Maybe I'm, I, I, I'm different. I honestly like a slow burn as long as each episode fleshes out the content and actually delivers. It doesn't mean that the pacing is slow, right? Pacing in terms of the plot progression might be slow, but pacing in terms of the things happening in the episode, I don't think that would be slow. If, in terms of content based on how many episodes it would take to adapt everything. As an anime only, I can only speak for myself. I like this episode quite a bit. I'm Me too. I'm so glad Yamuchi's gone. I have no idea where we're going, but it's nice that we had a little bit of wholesome with, uh, you know, Horikiya's <laughs> brother and Aino Koji just kind of chilling for a minute after all. It's like, hmm, you want to date my little sister? <laughs> all the intensity, <laughs> Join my family. Hey, let me know what you thought, though, down below. And uh, any theories on the type of yeah. BS that Aino Koji's father and this chairman are probably going to do to him? Let me know. The theories that I have. Anyways, guys, please go give Mr. Brandon a like on his video. Subscribe to the channel if you have it. But my favorite theory so far of the whole thing going on with uh, Tsukishiro and everything. Uh, Aino Koji's dad's influence, obviously, most likely. But it's like, again... Think of it beyond, not just the white room, but the white school. We'll have to Koji's dad's like, fuck it. We can't, you know, if we can't bring him back to the white room, let's bring the white room to him, right? I like that theory, but that's it for me, and I'll see you next time.